Hi, my name is Amy Alleman, and this is my story. This is my son Kai, our son Kai. He is nine years old. His birthday is February 22nd, so he just barely had his birthday. And he is our little heart healer, aren't you? And you love your daddy, don't you? What's one of your favorite memories about dad? Bike rides. You like, your daddy would take you on bike rides. Where would daddy take us? Do you remember? The library. The library. Go to the library. That's Daddy's favorite place, isn't it? Oh yes. And this is Kenneth. Turn around and say hi to the camera. Hi. I like to bike with him. Yeah, <laughs> biking is our favorite thing. I watch Star Wars. Yeah. Who's yeah. Daddy's favorite? Darth Vader. That's right. Han Solo. Daddy likes Darth Vader and Han Solo. What about but... your Michael and I met at Macy's Grocery Store up here in Logan. When I started working, I noticed this guy would come in at night to work on the night shift as a night stalker. And I was like, oh, he's good looking. When I look back at it, it's so obvious. But I was like, curling my hair to go into work at midnight and wearing skirts, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> and the funny part was, is he didn't think I was doing it for him. He thought I liked some other guy in the night crew. But he never spoke to me the whole month. Every single guy spoke to me when he came through the line, and he was the only one that did. And I thought he was gone. I thought, oh my gosh, I missed my chance. You know, I was too shy to talk to him last night on the night shift. Must have been just totally divine intervention, because he came through my line for his break, and he was like, so, are you the permanent midnight checker? And I'm like, yes, here's my chance, here's my chance. No, actually, tonight's my last night, like, wink, wink, and he's like, oh, that's cool, okay, and I'm like, what? Things were gone, I worked for all my life, and I had and guy, He asked me out, like, that's the first words he spoke to me, was he asked me out, you know, and I was like, uh-huh. On our first date to Romeo and Juliet up at USU, it was November 30th of 2001, and, um, it, it, history. From there, we were engaged four weeks later. Um, my husband um, grew up in Georgia, and he moved out here to go to Utah State to be a, an elementary ed teacher. He graduated in 2004 from USU, um, and we ended up getting a job in Las Vegas. Driving home from my parents' house, and he just said, "Hey, is it okay if we talk?" And I'm going. People only say that if they're going to break up with him. Like, oh, I've been married for like six years. He said, What do you think about me joining the army? God bless the USA. I, I was absolutely stunned because never even crossed my mind. Would have never even crossed my mind. And in my head at that moment, I, um, I, something in the back of my head said he's not coming home. Just because that would be a possibility, you know, but I'm just like, but in the back of my head it was always there. Our original plan was to um, finish out the school year and then he'd go to basic training. Then they told us that they could offer us like a $40,000 enlistment bonus if he could leave in a month. And since we were in debt with college and all these other things, we're like, and we also found out we were pregnant with our third. And three days before he left for basic training, I had a ruptured ectopic. It had first and they had to take out my fallopian tube and everything so um that's Christmas for us um but you know really fun I remember though when they wheeled me into after surgery and he stayed up with me all night sitting in this really uncomfortable teal armrest you know and he held my hand all night and we were laughing at clothes steaming commercials infomercials and it was like one of the funnest times I've ever had with him. We were supposed to be spending that night in a hotel as our last weekend away with each other. And so we were like doing cheers with like, you know, hospital glasses with our apple juice. <laughs> Instead he's like, ah, poor man's Martinelli's. <laughs> we just love being together. It didn't matter if we were in a fancy hotel or not. It was just great to be together. You know, it makes me so happy. So he was in the 5th Squadron, 1st Cavalry Regiment of the something striker brigade combat team um anyway so he was on a strike went out and boasted a little bit about him that when he did his oh i can't remember what it's called his ASVAB test 
can't remember. Anyways, whatever the military one is, I think it's ASVAB. You got the highest possible score you can get. Wow. Yeah. And so they honestly said you could pick any field that you want. You could have chosen a really cushy desk job with military intelligence. And he was like, I want to be out on the front lines. Next to you and defend her still today. So I said, well, I support you. Because Michael doesn't make rash decisions, you know. He thinks things out very carefully. And so I trust him. I said, okay, I'm good, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Nobody could understand why he was there. They're like, what are you doing here? You know, you have a degree. You have a wife and kids. You're old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, everybody's like 18. 18 to 21 was like the, the normal age range. So he's like at least 10 years old. You know, and, um, and he's, you know, he's just like, it's what needs to be done. You know, and, and he's like, well, I'm able to do it. We found out that he was being stationed at Fort Ray right in Alaska. In the cavalry regiment, though, which is really funny, because when he was signing up, he was like, "I really would love to be a cav scout," but the infantry was the only one that was offering such a higher enlistment bonus for going so early. He was on a striker. Do you know what a striker is? No. It's, it's basically like a tank, but with wheels. Instead of like having the thing that just turns, it's got eight wheels. You have four on each side. You know, massive. He flew out at noon to the Mojave Desert for a month of desert training. You know, and so he's out tearing around on this stuff, you know, out there, and, it, and the cutest part about it is, he's like, oh, tearing around on a striker in the desert, he's like, Because, <laughs> as hard as it was for him to be separated from us, I knew at least he was getting to do all of his childhood boy dreams of driving a tank, and shooting a gun, and blowing things, blowing up. things up, yeah, it's exactly, and hunting down bad guys, you know, it's like, how was it? <laughs> he deployed September 20th of 2008, Got over to Iraq. He was in a really rural part of Iraq. He was about 20 miles away from the Iran border. It's really kind of out there. There's nothing real big. We didn't know what the communication was going to be like. We knew that you, it, with technology nowadays, it's really easy to communicate. They have Skype and all these different things. But where he was in a more rural area, we didn't know if, what it would be like. Um, thankfully, we didn't get to do Skyping, but we did get to talk on the phone or at least talk online, like at least almost once a day, unless he was on a mission. You know, which was just an absolute blessing. 